Aloha guys, Justin here with yet another episode of Fishing Dive Hawaii where we give you all the best fishing and diving tips here in the Aloha State and this is a video that you guys have been waiting for for a while now and that's a spearfishing gear video. So I'm going to be giving you guys seven things that you absolutely need in order to get started spearfishing as well as some bonus tips. Stay tuned. So today we're gonna to talk about spearfishing gear and everything you need to get started. Now this is gonna be a very important episode for those of you guys who are just beginning and for a lot of people who may not have a lot of the things that I'm gonna list out right now. And again, I wanna thank all you guys for your continued support doing the 500 subscriber giveaway. Congratulations to all the winners. Yesterday we just hit 600 subscribers, so our channel growth just keeps going up and up and that's thanks to you guys, my viewers. Please comment below on stuff that you guys want to see and I'll add it to my schedule and try to film videos for you. And if you guys haven't already, check us out on Instagram at Team Fish and Dive where we feature a bunch of fishing and spearfishing content that I know that you guys will love. You can also tag me in your guys next catch and I'll feature you right up there on top of the Instagram feed. Now there are seven essential things that you're going to need. Let's start off with number one. Now the first thing you guys are going to need is a good mask and snorkel. Now I know that sounds pretty obvious, but if you don't get a good mask and snorkel to begin with, then you're just gonna have a really tough time. You're gonna be wasting your money on cheaper stuff. So I suggest just getting a really high quality mask and snorkel because that's the only way you're gonna be able to see fish. That's the only way you're gonna be able to breathe when you guys are swimming out in the water. So when I first got started spearfishing, there was kind of a lot of masks, but not as much as there are today. You guys can find really high quality masks. I do suggest going to a local dive shop, you know, surf shop that sells dive gear and ask them for recommendations. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to pick the right mask. So make sure you guys grab the mask like this. You're just gonna put it, push it up against your face see how the mask popped off like that if it doesn't do that then the mask is too big or too small you're going to want to get another mask so the mask that i personally use is a gold mantis it has the yellow tint you guys can get it in different tints the more reflective one but i do like the yellow one i've had this before and i'm going to link that up in the description so you're also going to need to find a really good snorkel i chose the gold super bullet which is probably the more expensive snorkel just because it has two purges the only thing about these, if you guys are rolling these around in sand, sand can get inside the purge and block it off. So the next time you guys go diving, you'll have a hard time using it. But I do like the two purges because it's more oxygen flow. It's easier to spit out water when you guys are diving. And overall, I recommend the Gold Super Bullet. If you guys don't get this one, just make sure you guys pick another high quality snorkel. This one does have like those rubber mounts. Do not get a snorkel that has a plastic ones. Otherwise, you guys will be very uncomfortable in the water start hurting your teeth. Now the second thing you guys are gonna need is a good pair of fins. I choose these Cressy 2000 HFs. I think that's what it's called. I'm gonna link it up in the description. But these are plastic fins. They have great foot pockets. Make sure you guys try them on before you buy them because it's not a true size fit. Like I'm a size 13 and these are a size 11, 12 and they fit me just perfect. I use the mask and snorkel to see and breathe but you use the fins for transportation. If you guys also get cheap on this, you guys not gonna be able to go as far out as fast and it's gonna be a little more dangerous because you guys won't have as much power in you guys kicks than you would if you just picked up a better quality fit. Now when you guys go into the dive shop, you guys may also see these that have interchangeable blades. I don't know if it's just the Omer one, but in my experience, these things pop off while I'm diving and they, they made it pretty dangerous at times. So I do not recommend these or at least this one. Like I said, you guys can pop off the fin. You guys can put a more expensive carbon fiber ones. They do make it easier for diving. I personally have never used carbon fiber fins. I have heard stories of people taking long drops, their fins actually cracking on the bottom and then drowning. Now this may be like twice, two or three times, but in my opinion, that's not a risk I'm gonna take and I'm not diving that deep anyways. So just don't get carbon fiber fins to start off with. They're really expensive and they break a lot easier than the plastic ones. Now we're on to number three, which is a good wetsuit or rash guard top. Now if you guys aren't sure if you guys are gonna be that serious into spearfishing, a rash guard is just good to have, especially the one with the pad over here so it doesn't hurt as much when you guys are loading these spear guns. If you guys do think that this is something you're gonna be doing for a while, I do recommend getting a wetsuit. This is the one that I use personally. It's an XL hex suit. I've had this for like four years, honestly, and it's been doing me really good. Um, this is a hex technology. They say it helps you with sharks and stuff, but since then, hex went on their own, so if you guys wanna purchase 
wetsuits from there, I'll link them up in the description. If you guys are diving in Hawaiian waters, I recommend a 3.2 millimeter. Now this is a one piece suit, but they also sell two piece suits, which you know, I've never tried, but I do recommend a one piece suit if you guys are just getting started. Now the reason you guys wanna get a rash guard or wetsuit top is so that you guys don't get cold and it also protects you from getting cuts and scratches when you guys are sitting on the bottom of the reef. If you guys are getting a wetsuit or a rash guard top, do not get anything over three millimeters. You guys could possibly suffer from a heat stroke when you guys are in the water. If you guys are getting cold in the water without using a wetsuit or a rash guard. You guys aren't gonna be able to hold your breath as long. You guys are gonna start feeling really sick. So make sure you guys stay protected, get a wetsuit or a rash guard top. So number four is gonna be like three things all bunched together. And that's this piece of equipment right here, starting with your guys' weights, weight belts, you guys' dive knife, and the kui if you choose to carry that on top of your guys' weight belt. Now you can find a good weight belt at Walmart, but I choose to get this plastic one. I feel like they do sell a cheap one at Walmart, but if you guys wanna get this one, go to a local dive shop and they'll help you out with that. Now they sell these kind of just in a length, you just have to cut off um, whatever you're not gonna use, so it's one size fits all. As far as the weights, they can be a little expensive, and I can't tell you right now if it's a one size fits all sort of thing, like two pounds of weights per 50 pounds that you are. I weigh 220 pounds and I get away with, what is that, two, four, seven pounds. And if you guys are using a rash guard over a wetsuit, you guys are gonna have to use less weights because it's not as buoyant as a wetsuit. So with the weights, you guys are just gonna have to play around with it. Start off with not buying a lot, but just buying a little bit, you know, go diving with it, see how that works, and you guys can know if you wanna add one more pound, two more pounds, three more pounds, so on and so forth. Now the second thing on here is a dive knife. This is a Salvamar one, and I carry it on my weight belt. Now you guys can carry it on the shoulder. They have straps for you guys' knees, but I choose to carry it on my weight belt. It's just self-preference. I have carried it on my buoy before, but I would recommend keeping it on you so that it's just really convenient to use. Now the importance of a dive knife, you're gonna be using this to brain your guys' fish or kill your guys' fish after you shoot it. You're gonna use this to cut your guys' line if it gets stuck, your weight belt if it gets stuck. It's just really important to have a dive knife and they do sell a lot of cheaper options for this. So this is something you can kind of get away with and play with the price a little bit. Now the third thing I have on here is a kui or a stringer. This is what you guys are gonna be putting your fish on top of when you guys shoot them. I carry one on my weight belt and I also carry one on my buoy. If you guys don't know how to rig it on your weight belt, you can take it to a local dive shop. I got mine done at Westside Dive in Haleiwa and they'll hook it up for you. So the fifth thing that you guys are gonna need and this is finally the fun part is a weapon. Now, you guys aren't gonna catch any fish without using a three-prong pole spear or a gun, unless you guys are Aquaman. I don't even know if he catches fish. Does Aquaman catch fish? I think fish are his friends. So this gun right here is a Hatch Amaro, a 55 inch, which comes out to about a 115 centimeter, and that's how they measure guns. I do not recommend getting anything, getting anything under 90 centimeters, especially in Hawaii, just because it's gonna give you a lot more options if you get the longer guns. And do not get a gun that's over 115 to 120 centimeters. It's gonna be too big and it's gonna be potentially dangerous, especially if you guys are just getting started into spearfishing. So there's a video that I made specifically talking about choosing your first spearfishing weapon. Now it's all your choice, but I do give out a lot of good tips in this video right here, so go check that out if you guys haven't already. I'm probably gonna do a separate video on this gun specifically if you guys are interested in something like that. Just leave a thumbs up and or comment in the description. Number six on the list is diving with a partner. This is so very important. I used to go on a lot of solo dives when I first started diving as a kid, when I first started diving when I was 18, but I used to go on a lot of solo dives and I will say they're very dangerous, especially for just a beginner. So make sure you guys dive with someone who's better than you or at the same level par. You wanna make sure you're swimming next to them and that you guys have eyes on each other at all times. It's very important. It could mean life and death. So make sure you guys always dive with a partner. Now the seventh and final thing that you guys are gonna need is a dive buoy and a tagline, especially and if you're in the state of Hawaii, it's required by Hawaii state law to dive within, I think, 150 feet by your buoy. And you guys have to have a dive flag with it, as you can see here. Now, they do sell cheaper ones. They sell packages. You don't need to get this plastic one. You can get the rope one. But as you get better and better, you guys are going to want to get the plastic one anyways. But make sure you guys have a dive buoy at all times. Now, here are some bonus things that you guys are going to need, starting with gloves. These aren't even diving gloves. These I got at Ross for like four bucks. It'll save you a lot of money if you guys just get some of these 
cheap um, gardening gloves. You guys can find them at Walmart for a couple bucks, but these work just fine. You wanna make sure you get gloves. It's not super important, but it'll help with getting scratches, getting poked by the fish and the spines and stuff. Just, just pick up a cheap pair of gloves. Again, I wanna thank you guys for all your support, helping me reach 600 subscribers just yesterday. If you guys haven't already, check out my website if you wanna support the channel, fishanddivehawaii.com. You guys get exclusive discount, 30% off your guys' purchase. Just use the code fishanddive500 at the checkout and it'll get you guys a nice discount. So hats like this, I'm also pre-ordering these hats, so if you guys are interested in a hat like this, this is a nice trucker one. I'm gonna be doing a pre-launch sale soon. So if you guys want a hat like this, just DM me on Instagram at Team Fish and Dive. So hopefully you guys learned a ton from this video. Go out there and catch some good fish. Make sure you guys keep safety as your number one priority. And it took me a while to make this video because I wanted to go really into detail. Make sure you guys don't get hurt. That's why I was kind of nervous making this video, but I do think I covered all the bases. And if you guys don't know, don't go, like they say, if you guys you know, are kind of nervous about going to a spot, just don't even try. Go to a spot you're familiar with or dive with somebody who is familiar with the spot that you want to try and go. I'm going to link everything I talked about in the description along with a dive partner. I'm just going to put a link on Instagram or Facebook because that's how I got good at diving is reaching out to people who are better than me, you know, going to the community, asking questions. There's a lot of Facebook groups wrapped around this, Instagram pages, DM people, DM divers and see if they can take you out to their spots. That's how you guys are gonna get good fast. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Shoots, mahalo, see you later, bye-bye.